right, guys, we're here at the Menorum booth at the PDEC 2018 in Toronto. I'm happy to have with me our director and one of the co-founders of Menorum Gold, Dr. Peter McGaw. Peter, thanks for being here. A pleasure, Sonny. Great, great. So we're here, and uh, you know, our last follow-up uh, video that we did on Alamos Project was talking about the, uh, the drill hole number seven that really hit some really strong mineralization, 8.25 meters of 1,700 grams per ton silver, and it was at a right angle. And you just actually just visited a project recently, right after that, and we brought back some core. So let's talk about that. This core box is part of the intercept from hole seven, uh -huh. and there's a couple of really important things here. The first of which actually looks pretty minor. Except this is the hanging wall of the vein. So this is the, the upper contact on the vein, and we can see looking at this that that contact is almost perpendicular to the core axis. Wow. And so okay. what that's telling you is that we hit the vein squarely, and the, and the eight meters that we see is probably very close to true thickness on the vein. So, okay, and so great. that's one of the first things you want to see. Excellent. Wow. So that you know that your true thickness really is. Okay, great. The other thing that you want to see is the kind of stuff we can see right here beautifully, which is multiple stages of vein mineralization, breakage, rotation, fancy word is brecciation, that just means broken rock, mm -hmm. and then it's all glued back together by later stages of quartz that is mineralized. So right. that's telling you that it's a long-lived, multi-stage, multi-pulse vein, okay. and that's all very positive. I mean, you want to make sure early in exploration that everything is telling you you're in elephant country. Right. And we don't know whether this is the tail, the trunk, the leg, the body of the yeah. elephant, okay. but we know we have a piece of an elephant. Okay, that's great. Wow. That might be considered a forward-looking statement, <laughs> but you know we're in a district that produced somewhere between 100 and 200 million ounces of silver from wide, high-grade veins, yeah. and this looks like what the old-timers would have mined. Wow, okay, wow, that's exciting. And actually, to me, this is wonderful. Yes. But this is just this is just step one, yeah. because we've recognized for a long time that there are multiple veins on this property, yeah. multiple structures. Some of them we don't know whether they're veins or not. Yeah. But we've got prospectors down there working, and while I was there, they came in with this, which came off a surface outcrop or float. We're not sure exactly yeah. what yet, but this is on a vein that's west of where we were drilling. We haven't gotten to this thing before, and this has a spectacular fragment of high-grade mineralization within the vein. Okay. And you can see, looking at this, that this is actually broken off from somewhere else in the vein. And we see textures that indicate this probably was brought up the vein from depth. Wow. So okay. somewhere at depth, there's more of this. Okay. And based on what we know about the mineralogy of this, we're looking at very high-grade silver-copper mineralization here. Wow. So, okay. again, this is... This is telling us that not only is the whole seven, the way the Europa vein, mm -hmm. well mineralized, but that we've got parallel structures that have similar style of mineralization in them. We don't know yet which is the biggest vein on this property. We yeah. know historically the veins were up to 20 meters wide, those yeah. two veins that are on opposite sides of yeah. the upthrown block. So. 10 meters or 8 meters is a nice place to start, yeah. but that's not necessarily as good as it's going to get. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing similar kinds of rocks, maybe not this flashy, because even the old timers would have very carefully brought this home and sent yeah. it through the middle. Wow. So okay. this is an unusual thing to be able to find. But they're coming back with similar kinds of mineralized rock from structures up to several kilometers to the east and to the west of the historic center of the district. So it may just be an accident of geology mm -hmm. that the part of the district that was discovered right. yeah. 400 years ago yeah. is what people think of as the center of the district, but it may not be. Wow, that's very exciting. So I guess we have a lot of work on our hands now going forward. This is Barbara the kind of work you like. Absolutely. <laughs> this, again, this is the kind of thing that gets a geologist out of bed in the morning. Excellent, Every that's morning. great. So let's talk about the, our upcoming exploration plans at Alamos. I mean, the core looks great. We had some success there. What's, what do we do going forward? Well, there's a lot to do. Uh, the most important thing I think for us to do next is we've recognized that there's a whole series of parallel structures in this district, none of which have been more than prospected. Right. And we need to develop drill targets on those. We need to go, we need to figure out how big this system really is. Okay. And you know, we've, we've demonstrated that it's a lot bigger than anybody thought. 
we just have to make sure that it's not bigger than we think so that we understand the system as a whole. So we got to back off, understand the forest, and then we can start focusing on drilling some more trees. Perfect. Well, thanks, Peter, for being on the segment today. Uh, if you have any further questions, please contact us at uh, minoramgold.com. You can ask us any questions about our project portfolio, uh, and we, we'll, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions.